What's up everybody, it's Trip with Setting and Such here on YouTube. In this video, we're gonna talk about what can we as paddlers and kayak campers learn from backpackers. Well, there's a lot. I've been studying for the last few weeks and you know, trying to reduce what I carry and I'm gonna share a lot of that with you right now and how we can benefit from it, okay? And also, at the end of this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the what if mentality and how what if we really shouldn't have that mentality at all. But first, real quick, I want to thank everyone who jumped over on Patreon to help support the channel. Thank y'all so very much. After the quick little Patreon video that I put out, oh wow, I really appreciate you guys. And I just want to give a quick shout out to a few of the special patrons we've got. Chuck Agler, Jonathan Neusser, Ben Hessian, and Rick Coleman. These four gentlemen are all supporting at the $10 uh, Mark and I just want to thank them especially one of the perks is you get a shout out in a video So thank you guys very much for that. So if you're interested in patreon There's gonna be a link below so go check out that but let's get back to the meat of this video So I notice people you know carrying a lot more than they need and a lot more than they should in their kayak When they're doing these camping trips or even when they're doing day trips honestly um, And you know that's something that you know not only do I see other people that can improve from but I can improve on that myself okay you know on my last trip I did the four days down the Suwannee River had a blast on the stand-up paddleboard you know I really I really before the trip I was like okay I want to see where I can you know focus my efforts and reduce my bulk minimize my weight and you know just see what kind of benefits and stuff I can get out of that and just see if I can get by with less with the same comfort and really and truly you can and it's not all that difficult okay because in the end, we really don't need as much gear as we bring. And, you know, like I said, we can learn a lot from backpackers. There are some backpackers out there who do these through hikes, who are like three, six months on the trail hiking with like a 12 pound or even an eight pound or even lower base weight. So that covers like everything that they carry, all their luxuries, everything except their food, their water, and their fuel. Eight pounds in a little bitty backpack for months on end, okay? So it's certainly doable, but you know, we had the luxury, you know, we're on kayaks, so we're like, okay, man, let's load it down, baby, you know, let's go. But there may, that could be good and bad. Why should you consider carrying less? That's what it's gonna do for you, it's gonna get lighter weight and less bulk. So the lighter weight, how can that benefit you? Well, okay, uh, lighter weight, you know, your kayak is gonna be lighter, so you're gonna be able to go faster and cover more miles each day, or either you can cover the same amount of miles with less effort, okay? And then once you get to camp, you don't have as much stuff to lug up to camp, or you don't have to drag your kayak as far if you're doing a portage, it's just less weight, less hassle, and you know, loading and unloading the kayak, you know, just less stuff is less hassle, like I said. In some ways, you know, less can be cheaper, you know, because do you need that uh, $400 GPS or that whatever expensive little luxury item? Do you really need that? Do you really? Whatever you carry less stuff, you're gonna have less setup time, right? Less setup time at camp, so that's more time to enjoy, you know, the surroundings, which is why we kind of go out and do the kayak camping thing in the first place, right? Then whenever we think about the advantages of less bulk, okay, you know, bulk, you know, we don't want it to be going down the river with our kayak just packed up and stacked up like a barge, right? You know, that's gonna, you know, in a lot of cases, if we overpack our kayaks, that can, you know, lead us to being top heavy and the boat not being as stable and a little more dangerous. That's a situation you don't wanna be in that I have certainly seen. It could also mean more windage. So if we're paddling into the wind or if we have a crosswind, it can really be blowing us around or really slowing down our progress a lot. Less windage is a good thing, trust me. Also with less bulk, you know, we're on the water, Okay, and we're out in the elements, so you know, that's a lot of stuff we have to keep dry. So if you have less bulk, that's you know less things you have to worry about keeping dry, whether you know while you're paddling, keeping them dry from the water splashing, the waves and stuff, or when you're at camp, keep them dry from the downpours that come. Whenever we do bring less stuff, you know that can kind of free up some space or some weight or some other things that you know can make our experience more enjoyable. Maybe like a slingshot or you know a good book. What are some ways we can lighten up our gear and reduce our bulk? Well, there are quite a few actually. First off, you know, this video is based on what can we learn from backpackers, okay? Well, backpackers, it's a, it's a huge, huge market. So there's a lot of really cool stuff out there that's directed just towards backpackers and then there's small and lighter weight. And tents is one of them. See, this is a tarp tent contrail. This is my first backpacking tent that I purchased. I think it was like 250 bucks or so, but it's super lightweight, super small. I think it's like a little over two pounds. Uh, and this is a single person tent. It's just a really nice tent and you know, 
as you can see, it's a lot smaller than like a bulkier tent you may find at like Academy or Walmart or somewhere. So it takes up a lot less space and it's a lot lighter. Then we get the tarps. Now I made my own tarp. Mine's made out of sill nylon. I think it's like, uh, I don't even know what weight fabric it is, but it's sill nylon and it's really light. This is actually my, my tarp my hammock and my bug net in here and my straps and everything my whole hammock and shelter system in here and you know you can get a lightweight tarp and you know there's even lighter weight options than this they they have cuban fiber which is like the new awesome stuff it's super lightweight but you know the material is like three times the cost so you're going to be paying a little more for it or a decent amount more but silk nylon is still really small and really light lightweight you can buy some silk nylon tarps from say academy or rei and things like that but you're really going to you know get into your better stuff whenever you kind of go for your smaller uh what do they call those like little bitty individual companies i can't think of the name right now but uh i don't know back to tents do you actually need a tent no you really don't need a tent um you could just have a tarp and sleep on your uh, your sleeping pad that you know you can get by with that there's a lot of backpackers who do that there's even some who just sleep in a bivy in like a little bitty tarp or like they use their poncho and you know they'll just sleep in a waterproof bivy over their sleeping bag and stuff and I mean it reduces a lot of weight and a lot of bulk if you don't have to carry a tent at all and just a little small tarp oh my goodness I know lots of people may think it's weird just to be like sleeping out there and be out in the elements because you feel like you have some sort of protection through these paper thin uh, tent walls but you know I've never seen or heard of a bear that comes up to a tent and it's like well doggone it if they weren't in that tent I might could have me something to eat tonight or you know I just can't get these zippers to work you know I've never heard a bear say that you know so it really doesn't provide you much physical protection from any of the dangers other than maybe you know bugs or something but you know a lot of times you don't have to worry about that anyways but you know so a tent is kind of a you know luxury that is not necessarily necessary okay but still if you do like tents you know there are some lighter options out there that are cheaper the gear top ul1 tent it's on amazon it's like uh, i think like 99 dollars or something something like that but i'll have a link to it below you can check it out it packs up really small it's got good reviews and it's lightweight so it's going to be a better option than most of what you're going to find in your stores something pretty cool about the gear top tent is it's kind of in different pieces so if you're wanting to kind of you know maybe steer away from the tent or kind of leave some of it at home like the tent comes in two pieces you have the actual inside of the tent then you have the actual rain fly but something cool about it is you can take the rain fly off leave the tent itself which is you know the screened in portion and the bottom of it you can leave that at home and just bring the rain fly and camp under that so like you can cut your weight I don't even I don't know what it is technically but in half your bulk in half and still have basically a tent so it's you know you're kind of like buying a tent and a tarp all in one so that is one of the reasons that why I suggested that tent I think it's really awesome I I'd, I'd like to have one to be honest just to kind of try and play with but I think it's a good one for you guys then we get to our sleeping bag or under quilt and sleeping pad all right so for the sleeping bag this is my mountain hardware ultra laminia 32 degree synthetic bag this thing weighs 1.11 ounces okay and this is kind of an expensive bag this is a great bag and even this is a lot lighter and a lot less bulky than you know your typical bags that you're, you know sleeping bags you're gonna find at your general you know uh, Academy and Walmart stores this thing just packs down pretty well and it's pretty lightweight but you can get even better than this uh, I'm actually considering going to the um, the Aegis Max it's a down ultralight sleeping pad. It's like one pound, two ounces sleeping bag. It's actually a sleeping pad, sleeping bag. I may have said sleeping bag, but it's a down sleeping bag for $75. I think it may be only rated to like 40 degrees or something, but I'm also, you know, I'm thinking, okay, I can just bring two of them because it's considerably smaller than this. So I can just bring two of those and you know if I need it but if I don't I could just bring one of them and use it as a quilt in my hammock because I'm a hammock sleeper but of course you, know, you could use it on a sleeping pad or in a tent so for $75 for a nice down sleeping bag uh, that's kind of hard to beat hard to beat then we get the sleeping pads for those of you who like to sleep in a tent or sleep on the ground all right you know you can get the fallen ones which are pretty big and bulky yes they are lightweight but you know in a kayak you know we're kind of trying to save bulk a little bit so if you go with an inflatable pad you can get some pretty small pretty lightweight ones I'm actually wanting to get one to try it's the um, outdoors lab uh, ultralight and it's $45 for a very small very lightweight 
um, inflating sleeping pads. So, you know, that is a good way to save weight. Really, those three major things, your shelter, your sleeping bag, and your sleeping pad is where you can save a lot of weight, a lot of weight. And then something big that I see where a lot of people can save weight is, do you need a cooler? Do you really, really, really need a cooler? No, you don't need a cooler. On almost, I think every single one of my trips, I've never brought a cooler, never brought anything cold. It's just not necessary, and a cooler can be so big and so heavy. I don't know. I just don't think that's necessary. And of course, backpackers who are out there for months, they don't have, they don't, they don't have that that luxury. But if you do want a cooler, there's a company called Ice Mule, and they make these like dry bag, insulated dry bag coolers that are really cool. I got to check them out at iCast this past year. So check those out. They can really save you some weight and some bulk. Uh, so check out Ice Mule. Ice Mule. Be a link below to those two. Now we are on kayaks, so we're on the water. So what do people like to bring? You know, a fishing rod and fishing tackle. Well, you know, maybe you could reduce how much tackle you bring. You don't have to bring a big old tackle box. Maybe you know, kind of know what you're going to be using or what kind of fish you're going to be targeting. And just bring a couple of little bags or Ziploc bags, or you know, they have tackle bags or even some small tackle boxes like I have somewhere. Even some small little tackle boxes can probably hold all you need. You know, one, two, or three of these will really probably hold all you need for a typical fishing trip or for a typical kayaking trip. I mean, because do you really use everything in your tackle box? I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm not the one to preach about that, but I just think people are probably bring way too much tackle. Then we have stoves. Here's two of the stoves that I bring. This is the Nuclear Outdoor Products Iridium Stove. You just stick it down on the ground in the middle of your fire, stick your pot on it, and then here's my cat can alcohol stove that I made years and years ago when I first started backpacking, and I made it out of a fancy feast can and a hole punch. And it's a great little alcohol stove that's served me well so much. Um, you know, this thing is super light, the fuel is cheap, and it's pretty lightweight. It doesn't use very much at all to boil some water. Now, I know a lot of people use, you know, the popular jet bowl systems. Well, you know, jet bowl is a pretty big pot and you have your fuel canister and all this stuff, and yeah, it may boil water in, you know, I don't know, 12.36 seconds or something crazy, but, uh, you know, do you really need all that bulk of that expensive jet bull? No, you don't. I mean, you could save money and save weight and save bulk by just going with something simple just like this. Of course, you guys know that I love to bring my grill, especially when I go on saltwater trips, because often I'll catch crabs or something or another that I'll throw on the grill and cook. So this is my Grillix Foot Quattro, and it's going to be hard for me to not bring this, especially, like I said, on a saltwater trip. There's a few items that I'm going to stick with. This is definitely one of them. This is a great lightweight option, but something that I'm considering is actually, what about going stoveless, just not bringing a stove altogether? You know, if you guys remember my last trip, I had a few packet gourmet meals just like this right here. They're dehydrated meals, fantastic, super delicious meals that you don't even have to boil water for. Just add water to it and you're good. And of course, there's a lot of other no cook, no boil options out there. So, you know, what if you could leave the stove and the fuel at home? That sounds pretty good, right? I mean, you're saving a lot of weight there and a lot of bulk. Just leave it at home. And also, you're gonna save yourself time. And now it's the next day because I realized that while editing, my camera had shut off halfway through the video. So, put on the same shirt the next day, <laughs> so let's finish the video. Then we go to cook kits, okay? Now, these are the three cook kits I have. This is my brand new one that is smaller and lighter than what I've had in the past. Now, this right here is a GSI Pinnacle Soloist. It's a titanium kit. I mean, it's great. It's nice and lightweight, but it's uh, it's bigger than I need. You know, it's kind of fat and kind of bulky, and I never boiled that much water. All right, so then I went and I got this stainless steel Stanley that you guys have heard me talk so much about that I love. It is super tough, and of course, inside I keep my fuel for my little alcohol stove which also goes in here and a windscreen but then it also has a little insulated little cup here for if I ever make hot chocolate which I've done probably once or no, probably twice probably done twice so do I really need that no I mean technically I could have just drank it right out of this mug right out of this pot right yeah I sure could have so <clears throat> and also I never use the full capacity of this so I have picked up this Tokes 550 milliliter pot this is a titanium pot off Amazon for a whopping $25 which is a pretty good deal and you know this holds I think plenty of water that I will need to make my dehydrated meals and no it's not insulated or anything but you can still use it and uh, here if you want to hold it while it's nice and hot you can use the little stuff sack it comes in so great little pot for 25 bucks so like I said it's smaller and lighter than what I'm using and it meets all my needs so I'm just gonna go with this from now on I do believe 
Then we come to actual food types. Now I've been out and I've seen people who have brought hot dogs, um, hot dog buns, um, steak and all this fancy stuff and they brought it like like for the duration of the trip so not only did they have to have a cooler to haul this stuff but you know it was a lot of weight it was a hassle and uh maybe not the most nutritious thing and of course you know nutrition i'm kind of you know i like paying attention to my nutrition but do you need that stuff no you know you see me i bring like mres and things like that which i like i love they're they're pretty compact they're decent for you but i really love these little packet gourmet meals uh, or any dehydrated meals i make my own as well uh, you know and i like making my own really probably better because i can control exactly what's in it like sodium and preservatives all of these are pretty darn good but all right back to subject you can still with some dehydrated meals or you know just something that is calorie dense and you know something very small you know, don't bring like potato chips or something that's you know a lot of fluff where there's not a lot of good in it like bread you know bread takes a lot of space for the calories that it provides you next a really big one what about water that we drink now me in the past I've brought every ounce of water that I've needed throughout the trip I just brought it with me the whole time except for this past trip down the Swanee River because I knew I was going to be able to fill up and there was potable water at certain locations every night but you know generally I've just kind of gotten to where I bring all the water with me because a lot of my trips are at salt water so there's not really a good spot to fill up but I think what I'm going to start doing when I'm in the fresh water, like go down a river or a lake or something, I'm going to bring a water filter, which I've had these for a while, that actually one of you guys, a subscriber, gave this to me, so thank you very much for this kit. This is the Sawyer Squeeze Kit. Basically, you fill up this bladder with water, then you attach this filter to here, and then you squeeze the water out, and it comes out fresh and you just put it into you know a water bottle or something so you know you, you can really get by with just bringing three or four water bottles and a filter kit and you're, you're good to go this is a pretty good system but there are other systems out there one thing that is cool that they have it's a gravity system which basically you have a little larger bladder than this you fill it with water has a hose coming out of it hooks to your filter you just hang it up in a tree and it just drip 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 drips out and drains out so you don't you know no effort to filter your water out so once you get to camp Fill it up with water, hang it up, and start filling your bottles. Very easy, very simple, and it saves a lot of weight, you know, going down the river. Because, you know, if you're on a four-day trip, what's that? You know, you want to bring maybe a gallon a day. That's uh, four gallons times eight pounds. What's that? 32 pounds and a lot of bulk. My gosh, compare that to four bottles of water or five bottles of water. Wow, you can save so much so much. So that's something I'm really looking forward to taking advantage of. What about a, am I even recording? Yes. What about a GPS? Uh, do you guys, let's start that over. What about a GPS? Do we need a GPS? No, you don't need a GPS. You know, in the times that I've been out, I probably used a GPS. Um, I brought this like twice, used it twice just to turn on and track my speed. If I want to find my location, I'll generally just turn my phone on, bring up Google Maps, and see exactly where I'm at. So, do you really need a GPS? No, you don't. You know, this is a big expense, and it's a lot of weight, and it's something else to worry about getting wet or ruining or the battery is going low on. So, you can just substitute this just for your phone. No need for a GPS. Here's three fairly large tools that I'm going to start leaving behind. Now, when I first started, I was bringing the hatchet on all my cold weather trips. I just put it down on the kayak. It doesn't take up much room, but it's pretty doggone heavy. I used it a few times, but I didn't really need it. So, no more hatchet. And now I would bring a folding saw, which was great to use. Uh, really nice to, you know, cut up wood or something, but did I really need it? No. Now, I have my uh, multi-tool which I always bring with me, and it has a small saw on it somewhere right there. It's got a small saw, and this is a Gerber suspension multi-tool. I've had this thing since I got married, uh, and I brought it on every single one of my trips. It's been drenched in salt water and not rinsed off, and it's you know showing a little bit of corrosion, but it's still 100% serviceable, 100% serviceable, and it's a great knife great knife and then here is my I guess you could call this like a bush crafty type knife uh, you know it's kind of a big heavy knife great knife for you know cutting up wood or something but I'm not really into the bushcraft stuff too much uh, so I'm gonna leave this big thing home and just bring my Mora this is my more like my fire knife really good really lightweight knife really inexpensive knife too and it has you know it's the light my fire so it has this little flint steel in it so pretty cool pretty cool there so it's kind of you know an emergency uh, little fire starter there but it's a really nice lightweight knife like I said it's pretty inexpensive too 
But do you even need this? No, you don't even need this. Whenever I started my backpacking trips, I actually the only knife that I carried was one of the little bitty mini uh, Swiss Armies. You know, it has like little bitty scissors, little bitty tweezers, and toothpick, and a knife, and a little file. It's basically all it has. And I got by with it because you know, if you think, how much stuff do you really need to cut? Generally, I'm just cutting maybe some rope or maybe some food open. That's really mostly what I cut. You can get by without cutting anything else. Um, so do you need a knife of this size? You really don't. But you know, if you're gonna be catching fish or something, you know, you might want to bring one, but it's just something to consider leaving at home if you don't need it on that particular trip. What about a chair? Now this is my Thermarest Trio chair. You guys know that I love this thing. It's gonna be hard to get me to leave this bad boy at home. Uh, but you know, sometimes you know people have kayaks that have the seat on it, so you know you can always take that seat off and use it around camp. So do you really need another chair? No, you don't. But you know, especially you know, I have a hammock, so that's kind of like a chair. But sometimes I just like to bring this chair. It's just you know nice, especially if I'm going to be chilling out and just hanging out for you know some of the days. It's nice to have a chair, but you can consider not bringing it. I'm probably going to keep bringing it though. <laughs> what about soaps? Do you need soaps? Hmm, no, you really don't need soaps. This is what I bring, just a little pack of wet wipes. I use these mainly to go to the bathroom with. I also, when I first started, I would bring some Dr. Bronner soap or some Dawn soap and some hand sanitizer. Well, now I'm considering just bringing, you know, like half a pack of these, you know, take half out or something, uh, so it's not quite as heavy, uh, because we really don't use very many of them. But like half a pack of these, and maybe if I can get some little bitty individual packets of hand sanitizer because I really rarely use the hand sanitizer. I just have it there for like emergencies or something if I really need to get my hands clean. Uh, you know, because they really don't get very dirty when you're out in the wild anyways. It'd be cool to reduce what I bring to just a half pack of these and a few packets of hand sanitizer. What about a trowel? You know, the old poop scoop? Well, I've never owned a poop scoop. Uh, so what do I do? I take a rock or I take a stick or a paddle if I'm in the sand and I'll dig me a little hole and go in that. Do you need a trowel? No, you don't need a trowel. There's a lot of backpackers who never hike with one. How about a medical kit? Medical kit. This is my adventure medical kits. This is the .5 ultralight and watertight medical kit. And I've had this one maybe like six months or something since the other one was in my cooler that fell out of the back of my truck that I never found. And so I bought another one exactly like it because, I mean, I like, the, I like the bag. I like it's in a waterproof bag inside here, and it has some decent stuff in it. But as you can see, this still has the little, uh, I don't know, the little lock on it, so I've never opened it. And the other one, I had it for, I don't know, many years since my first backpacking trip, and I never used anything out of it. I'm almost positive. If I used anything, I might have used one thing one time. But, you know, so I'm considering actually downsizing this. Uh, why not? You know, uh, you really don't need that much. And we'll talk about the what if factor coming up. Clothing. You know, one thing when I first started, I was bringing way too much clothes. Way too much clothes. Uh, you know, so consider bringing less clothes. You know, you can kind of wear the same thing for several days, especially if you're in the water, you can wash at night. So have a, a day change of clothes and a night change of clothes and at each transition each day just wash each one and hang it up to dry at night or hang it up to dry during the day and you kind of have a clean set or you know cleanish set you know each evening and each morning so that is a good way to do it but there's also some ways you can you know get different clothes like you can get some down puppy jacket or a down beanie I would really like to get a down jacket for this coming cold season. Uh, I've never had one. I've always carried a fleece, and they're kind of bulky uh, and you know heavier. But you can get a down jacket that just compresses really small. But they're kind of expensive, so but that is something definitely worth looking into. What about electronics? That's something that I could certainly lighten up with. But I am going out there to film videos, and I try to film good quality videos. So uh, you know my budget, you know, kind of constrains me from getting the small, super, super awesome cameras. Uh, but here I have my nice. Icon D5200 that I'm filming on now. It's kind of a big and bulky camera and I usually bring it on all my trips because it just takes the best quality of what I have and it has a mic that gets good audio and you know can muffle the wind, cut the wind out. So you know I, I'm considering doing some changes but that's going to take some more finances to, to get some smaller more compact gear that performs just as well. But fortunately, I did just recently pick up this new GoPro. This is, I bought this used off eBay. This is the new Hero 5, I believe it is. So it's waterproof without a housing. So it hopefully will still get good audio while being waterproof, which, you know, with me, I like to talk around my mouth. Uh, so I have to have good audio when I'm filming. 
This was purchased with money that was raised over at Patreon from some awesome supporters, so thank y'all for that. Just wanted to give y'all a shout out for making things better. Thank y'all very much. Do you even need to bring cameras with you? Uh, really, you don't. I mean, they have some phones these days. This is my newer phone. Don't... A 7 Edge or something, whatever it's called. Phones these days take really good video, and this one's even like waterproof, but you know, I don't really want to gamble, you know, dunking mine underwater intentionally. But if you're just, you know, wanting to take some shots or especially photos, your cell phone can really do very well these days compared to most cameras. And, you know, you're already bringing your phone with you, so just bring your phone. Sunblock. You know, I always bring sunblock with me. I always try to wear it, and I really, I'm pretty successful at that. And, you know, generally I have been carrying this for a long time. It's got a little, you know, clip on it where I could put it on a carabiner or something. But I generally just kind of refill this and just bring smaller amounts of sunblock. Because, you know, even if this is full, it could still last you weeks probably for one person. So, you know, instead of bringing a big thing of sunblock, just bring a small one. You know, try to downsize everything that you're bringing. What about a towel? This is my, uh, MSR pack towel. Uh, this is a very lightweight, very small towel that packs up real small and I've used it. I've had this since my first backpacking trip. It's worked very well for me and it's lasting quite a while and you know there's not really a need for a big towel. I've seen some people they bring kind of larger towels or larger versions of these. Uh, do you really need it? I don't think so. I think it's definitely something to consider you can save a little bit of space, a little bit of weight with. A lantern. You know, this is my Black Diamond Orbit Lantern. I love this little lantern. But, you know, where can I stand to leave some things behind? Well, I think this may be one of them. Granted, I love this thing, but um, I, I just don't know if I get a lot of really excellent use with it. Usually what I do with it, I take it and I hang it from the ridge line in my hammock. And sometimes I'll turn it on, but it, I found that if I turn it on, it seems like my shadow is always blocking what I need to see with it. So, uh, you know, this bad boy made it need to stay at home and I'll just bring my headlamp instead. What about fire starters? How many of those do you need? Uh, you really don't need many. Like I have my knife with the fire starter on it. I usually bring a little Bic lighter and maybe some matches that are just in my little toiletry kit. That's generally all I bring. You don't need, you know, eight different ways to start a fire. <laughs> Toilet paper, how much of that do you need to bring? You know, I've seen people who've actually taken a roll, put it in the Ziploc bag, and just bring the toilet paper roll. Now, I don't know, maybe you need that much. Uh, me, I generally don't. I know it's kind of an awkward subject, but uh, I usually get by pretty well with just those little wet wipes. Uh, so, you know, consider bringing less of that. You know, you're bringing the wet wipes, you know, those can do double duty. Uh, double duty. Also, you know, as to kind of, you can bathe with those if it's a cold night, you don't want to get in the water or something. You can bathe with those and you can use those for the bathroom. Okay, so the what if mentality. Well, the what is the what if mentality? It is where, you know, people say, well, I need to bring this because what if? Or what if this happens? Or, you know, what if we get lost? Or what if I lose this piece of gear? What if, what if, what if, what if this? Well, all right, you know, the way I look at it is, you know, kind of the reality is, you know, whenever we go out there, most people, you're not like days away from civilization or from contact with somebody. So if you do get in trouble, if you do run out of food or, you know, lose your food, lose your water, lose a way to start a fire, you know, you're, you're, you're not going to die. You know, you can generally, you know, the body's pretty tough. You know, you can get out and you can, you know, you have enough time to get in contact with somebody. So in my mind, there's not really need to bring like an, a, a survival kit. You know, somebody may bring like a little survival kit or a big survival kit with them on their camping trip. Well, the way I look at it is everything you're bringing is part of your survival kit. You can really not bring a lot of extra stuff and you're going to be okay, folks. You're more than likely you're going to be okay. All right, one more big thanks to everyone over on Patreon. And, you know, one of my current patrons, you know, whenever I put out the video, there was kind of a little bit of, I don't want to say backlash or anything, but, you know, not everybody took it as good as some people, but the people who got on and signed up, thank you very much. But, you know, what my plea was, you know, I asked for a dollar a month. And, you know, some people said that's, you know, why is he asking for a dollar a month? And, well, you know, all right, think of it as kind of like a tip. This is actually something that one of the current patrons he brought up and I thought was a great example. He said, you know, whenever we go out to eat, you know, we tip our server. Uh, you know, like a dollar or, you know, probably more than a dollar, maybe like five, eight, ten, twelve, twenty dollars when we go out to eat. And why are we tipping them? Well, well, for their efforts, you know, for them doing a good job, for doing a service. And, you know, he kind of compared that to, 
um, me making videos. And and, you, and he said, you know, he doesn't feel bad tipping a dollar a month because he tips more on that when he goes out to eat. So this little example, I want to throw that out there. Thank you for that uh, that little example. You know who you are, so I really appreciate that. But hey, thanks to all the patrons, and you know, like I said, there's a link below. If you want to check out Patreon? Let's make Salem such bigger and better so we can inspire more people to get out there. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any ideas or tips or things that you're implementing to reduce your weight and your bulk uh, in your kayaking trips coming up that you, you know, it's kind of backpacking related or even if it's not, drop them in the comments below. Let's have a little conversation. And uh, hey, thanks for watching. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you in the next adventure or video. Get out there. See you, folks.